Hi, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Victory Road, where you get to see the greatest of celebrities and real people right here telling their victory stories. And I always like to open up with Isaiah 35, verse 8 through 10. It talks about a highway of holiness, that only the pure and the holy and the righteous are able to walk on this. And when you're in the middle of your Victory Road, when you're walking on this holy path, great things happen miracles happen, surprises and blessings happen. So let's just take a look, come on in and listen to our fabulous, wonderful guest and their next victory story. You're gonna be blessed. Victory Road. Everybody has a story to tell, to tell how you got to heaven when you came from hell. Victory Road. You come with me to victory down victory road, victory road, victory road, victory road. Thank you for joining us again today. We have an incredible guest. What she has been through, the tragedy that she has overcome, is not your typical tragedy story. And um, I'm really, really proud of this girl and this fabulous little pet on the set. Um, we have with us the one and only Tara Newell, Cash Money Newell. And uh, we're talking about what she and her family, Deborah Newell, her mother, and her sister, Jacqueline Newell, what they have done and what they've gone through when her mother uh, chose, and out of her mother's own words, her mother told me, I guess my picker is off. And I told her, guilty as charged. I think we've all had uh, off pickers at times when it comes to relationships. And uh, certainly this was a very scary one and harrowing experience. Quite an incredible story. I'm gonna let her tell you right now. So Dirty John is the name of the uh, podcast series. And then it rolled into a TV miniseries, right? Yes, a TV miniseries on and Bravo. That's what we saw it. We recorded it on Bravo, and then it became on Netflix and international, and then a documentary. Yes, on Oxygen. Dirty John, this is quite an intense story. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch it. I'm sure you will after we finish this interview. You're going to want to hear it. So you just started it by... by talking about your own experience, what you, your family went through when all this happened. For those people who don't know about Dirty John and why it's, I first heard about it, I think on Dr. Oz. So your PR, the hype that you had on it was incredible. But I want people to really take a peek. First of all, you were born where? I was born in Orange County, California. Oh, so you're an OC girl. Yes, I'm an OC girl. So okay. born and raised there. And I kind of grew up just having my mom be a full-time worker. So I had nannies to help take care of me. And then my dad and my mom got a divorce at the age seven. So it was just mm. um, lots of different family dynamics. So that had to be kind of like, you know, a hard strain period as a child going through. You know, um, it a was all right. I like. Mm, but I was that was okay nothing compared it. to what you went through yeah. later. Yeah, and then I also grew up in the church. I went to church every Sunday. I went to church on Wednesday I didn't for the know youth that group. about yeah. you. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. So I had a good outlet for myself. So this is how. You had your angels. Let me tell you, you had your angels all around you. So about how old were you when your mother met this gentleman named John? I was 25 years old. 25? Yes. Do you want to tell them a, a brief scenario, um, your story? Okay, so I was in an attack. My stepdad came after me. He was a con artist. He just conned so many women. He was able to just dig his claws and convince these women that he was such a great guy. And then it made these women so hard to leave, including my mom. So my mom actually left him twice. Oh, she yes. did. Yes, and the second time he ended up coming after me 
and he stabbed me in my parking garage and he tried to kill me and I was able to defend myself in the attack with cash and I was able to survive. Because that's just crazy. She told you, what, an eight part series in about five seconds what really happened. But I'm telling you all the details, what they went through, the struggles, how this man came in on the scene. He actually um, kind of stalked your mother. He found her on the dating line or something. Yeah. And. Um, then he realized that I guess she was not only gorgeous, your whole family's beautiful, oh, thank but you. he saw dollar signs too. And, um, you know, from what I saw and what I watched and heard that he started grooming your mother. Yes. And this is what happens to a lot of um, young women who are not aware of the signs of, uh, they're very sadistic, these, these, um, what was he diagnosed? Psy a psychopath? Psychopath. Or? psychopath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you explain the difference to the audience? The, do you know the difference between psychopath and sociopath? Um, I just know that psychopaths are more likely to kill you. Um, and they have a lack of empathy, but so do a lot of like sociopaths and uh, narcissists. They have that lack of empathy. And um, they don't have normal social skills. Yeah, so you can kind of see it. At first, they come off very charming, yes. right? And they know all the right words and everything, and they just want to be your best friend and do everything for you. Yes. And just your hero. They can do everything. Yes. And a you lot go, of, wow, this is what I've dreamed of my whole life, right? Yes. Well, a lot of them will use this tactic called love bombing. Love so, bombing? Yes, love bombing. So they'll, like, basically give you roses, like, shower you with love yes and so you feel like oh my gosh like he might be my prince charming and then until you're able to step out of it which they don't really give you a chance to do when they're love bombing you they're just showering they're, you with the gifts mm -hmm. the gifts the charm and yeah and they're constantly there so you're not able to really take a step out of this and mm. be like is something off with this wow so that's where you're you're drawn in because who doesn't like all the fancy yeah. charm, the romance songs, the flowers, the gifts, the trips, whatever. And to be, you know, told you're wonderful and beautiful every day and you go, my goodness, this is just like too good to be true. And usually it is. So going back to what you were saying, my goodness. So your mother was swept off of her feet by this psychopath by the psychopath yes and he posed I'm not giving away the movie or the the TV series because I want you to watch it but he I'm gonna give you highlights with Tara's permission um, he posed as a charming doctor right yes didn't he pose as a surgeon as an anesthesiologist he yeah he posed and he had all these documents stating you know, he forged what? All these documents stating he had his license and all of this? Um, well, I'm not sure what he did exactly with that, but he did go to nursing school. He did go to nursing yes, school. He did have a nursing certificate. So he knew the medical jargon, yes. right? And he was so smart, but he was not practicing during that time. Okay. Because he couldn't. Because, and according to your TV series, if I remember, he was thrown out of a hospital or two, wasn't he? Wasn't yes. he fired or let yes. go because they saw? You know. He was stealing narcotics. And <gasps> so he got fired for that and arrested for that. And that's when I think he fell down like an elevator shaft. When he was working at oh. this last hospital. Yes, right? because mm. he was running away from the cops. Nice fellow. Yeah. So, but none of this, when he appeared as the knight in shining armor to Deborah, your mother, I mean, he was just like, you know, it, you know what? It, very charming and yes. very successful, powerful. Just everything a little girl grows up to want. Yeah, to be around, was, to be, to have. Yeah, he was a doctor. He had a good job. He just came back from Iraq, apparently, which wasn't true. Another but, story. Yes, right? which was like 
a forefront that was so impressive to any lady looking for a man. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I saw your mother on a show, and she was saying that she started after a while, you know, seeing things that were off, a little off, because this guy had charmed the mother so much and started, and that's what they do, they charm you, then they suck you in and start controlling you, start isolating you from your own family and your friends. Yes. And um, he came in like a wrecking ball to this Newell family. He did. May I say that? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and you, I think it was your sister, right? Jacqueline is the one that said, and you, both of you, did not like him at all. Yeah, no. I mean, right away you could see, you know, all the red flags that your mother couldn't. Yeah, no. He, at first, he came into the house. My sister was living with my mom at the time. And he just had an eyeball for, like, a wandering eyeball. And so he kept looking around and being like, okay, like this is a nice place and kind of scoping it out scoping out the mm -hmm. whole place and what she had and yes. what you guys so now when she started doing some investigating I liked how she just went to work started googling him trying to find out who he was like undercover agent I thought that was really <laughs> cool and you know, I'm like yes good for Jacqueline but now were you also suspicious at the same time with her or did you go oh Jacqueline you're being you know, overreacting or whatever? Or did you I, agree with her? To be honest, at first I thought she could be overreacting um, because I was living in Vegas. I was not in California at this time. I was living in Vegas with my boyfriend at the time. And so I was kind of out oh, of it. Oh, so you were not on top of it at the time. Yes. You weren't right in the middle of it. No. I see. Yeah, until I came to help my mom move out of the place because she was in the high rise and she was moving to Balboa Island so I that she could remember that in the series. Yes. So oh, she, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. So she could have her space and her privacy so that my sister wouldn't be upset when he came over all the time. <laughs> so it was because, you know, Jacqueline was complaining and all of that. Yes. And she couldn't be happy with this guy, with Jacqueline there. Yeah, she was very persistent saying, Mom, no, this guy is not who you think he is. And then later on, you found out, you know what, we're going to take a short break. Take a peek at a few segments from this incredible miniseries and documentary, Dirty John. Don't go away. Come right back to hear the incredible finale of this story. Thanks. Poor Beach 911. We just heard her screaming. Do you see the blood? Yes. I'm not really sure what happened. It's really bad. I understand. We have officers on the way. I have three friends who have met their husbands online. I'm Deborah. I'm John. Hi. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> John makes me feel so special. He gives me so much. There's something up with my mom's new boyfriend. Hey, what's in the safe, kiddo? If he's really a bad guy and not just a jerk, mom will see it. Mm -hmm. But what if she doesn't see it? We're having a good time, and I just don't want it to end. I think he's living there with her. John? What the police say? I mean, do they know her? No. But do you? Is that supposed to be cute? You slowly disappear Don't talk to you about John. He is not a perfect person. But he loves me. He's very good at lying. Are you looking in there? How dare you? Are you watching me? Maybe I don't know who he really is. Threats, harassment, intimidation. They all say that it's you. What kind of a person does that? You're gonna find out what I am. You should enjoy the time left. That's what's gonna come down to. Only you know if you're really ready for what might happen. What do you mean, what might happen? Whatever happens between us, remember, I love you. Wow. Okay. 
I don't even need to say another word. You kind of sort of get the idea now what this beautiful girl has gone through. And little Cash, I mean, he was in there fighting hard for his mommy. And um, Cash is a hero. Yes, he is. So now you've got to watch this. I encourage you to watch. You've got to rent the series. I Rent is the miniseries they can rent on, uh, what is it, Netflix or Net Amazon? Uh, well, it's on Netflix it's November on Netflix. 25th. November 25th. For the U.S. Okay. And then internationally, it's on there. And then it's available on Amazon. Everywhere. Apple. YouTube. Anywhere. Yes. Okay. So please check out. You're going to want to see the entire story of Dirty John. It's so intense. Intense is the only word I could use because the fact that this truly happened, uh, you can't make stuff up like this. This is, you know, everyone says the truth is, is like crazier than, than fiction, you know. And so... Wow. Powerful. It's what crazy. You have gone <laughs> it's through. a crazy episode. So when that happened, at that moment when you realized, okay, I need to fight for my life, um, you just, I mean, you put on your cape. I mean, you had an S on your chest. You were super woman all the way. I mean, when he was coming at you with the knife, he actually stabbed you, what, two times? And once on the face, he cut yeah. you on the face. I had no idea he had a knife at first. I saw him and he looked me in the eyes and said, do you remember me? And grabbed me by the waist. And I knew that he was there to hurt me. And I was just like, I saw so many shows, like The Walking Dead, yep. Dexter, CSI. And I just knew what to do exactly from those shows. And I didn't think about what I was doing. I just did it. Hmm. The reason that he was coming after you, because at this point, you and your sister Jacqueline were on to him. You had done investigating. They had done some PI work. Um, well, my mom left him at this point, and so he kind of just went down a downward spiral. Okay. So he, like, just kept doing things, and then it's weird, like I think God put this in my life, but I had dreams that I actually stabbed and killed John, or not killed John, but stabbed him before this event even happened. You had visions of uh -huh. this? And I knew exactly what I needed to do in that circumstance when John was on top of me and I was able to get the knife. And you saw all this played out in your dream before? Um, not everything, I just had the vision of me stabbing him. Uh, I hate to use the word killing, but she had to kill him to survive. She had no choice. It's not like this girl goes, okay, I'm going to kill my stepdad. When you see the whole entire show, you will see it was for survival because he had already stabbed her. So it was for her survival. Mm -hmm. Because he was on top of me yeah. and on his knees, I was able to kick the knife out of his hand. That was really incredible. Okay. And it landed right where I needed it to be. <sighs> I've got the goosies. You know, God was with me. Yes. And it gave me exactly what I needed to do to fight back and to defend myself and get rid of him. Place the knife right by you. Mm -hmm. So I understand that you suffered a lot of, what, PTSD? PTSD? Yes. And so now you were speaking out as a spokesperson. Yeah. And you're helping people get over PTSD with similar situations, and you're educating other women and people. Um, yeah, because I felt, at first I didn't understand exactly what was going on with me. I felt crazy. I've lost some friends because they couldn't handle or be there to support or really understand what I was going Anxiety through. Anxiety and mood swings yeah. can happen with uh -huh. PTSD. Like, out of nowhere, mm -hmm. it can get triggered. Yes, and it kind of gets mistaken sometimes for borderline because yeah. you feel like there's something wrong with you, but you can't yeah. control yeah. it. And... I've learned ways to kind of cope with it and deal with it. I do still have triggers every now and then, but I know how to piece myself back together. That's so. amazing. So the fact that you survived, mm -hmm. the bad guy didn't, and that you're alive and Cash is alive, because I was screaming at the TV when this was happening, like, oh no, and don't kill the dog, don't hurt the dog. I was so concerned that he was gonna turn around just for, for you know, the just to be mean and hurt Cash. Yeah, no, afterwards I was like, did he hurt Cash? Did he do something yeah. to Cash? But 
Like, he was only wanting to get me. He was just wanting yeah. to get you. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's weird, but John actually did like animals. <laughs> he did. Yes. So, you know what? And that's the nicest thing about him, I should say, right? Well, I think the nicest thing about him is that he brought in two daughters. So I think that they're wonderful and amazing, and that's Aww. the best thing to come out of that. So you are friends with his two daughters? Yes. I think that's wonderful. God does work in mysterious ways because the, from his first wife, yes, um, he had these two wonderful daughters. And that now you guys are, you know, connected, friends, and friends, and family, basically. That's amazing. And I saw that you know you have a lot of similar stories to share, but I mean not what you went through, but yeah. they probably saw a lot as well as the yes. mother. We're glad that you survived. Thank you. Me and that too. you're thriving. Please tell us how we can. Oh, he probably wants to get down. Do you want to get down, Cash? Do you want to get down? He can sit down. He wants to sit down on the floor. <laughs> He's tired of being up. He can just lie down with you. There you go. He's tired of sitting up. He just wants to be Cash by next to mommy. <laughs> so can you tell everybody what your podcast is all about and how to find you? Okay, so it's available on iTunes, any um, podcast outlet. But it's about dating. There's a segment called Dirty Dates that we talk about bad or funny or horrible dates and just kind of pick out some of the red flags in that. And then also... Um, that we sounds fun, Yeah. Actually. And then some people come on that don't want to share dirty dates that tell us a great story about something they went through to hopefully help someone in that aspect. Like, we had an So it's addict. educational. Yeah, so we had an addict come on, and he explained his recovery and stuff. Some of the red flags. Do we have a minute to go over a few red flags? You covered, um, thank you, you covered one right away when yes. they come on, like like you said, love bombing. Yes, charming. You know, overwhelmingly too much. Yes. I like mean, it's one smooth. thing to have, yeah, too smooth. <laughs> Like too cool for school, uh -huh, right? Yes. Yeah, real smooth. Okay, and then uh, what is another? Can you give uh, our viewing audience, can you tell them a few more red flags to look for? Because all these girls, you know, they need to know this for their future, yes. what to look out for. Well, not looking people in the eyes, not having normal, normal social skills, um, not having a great relationship with their family or friends. If they don't have any friends, there's obviously something wrong Thank with them. Thank you. That's a big red flag right there. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't and that's interrupt. really all the ones that are general. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's just looking out for if your friends have a feeling about him, unless your friend's crazy, <laughs> you know, listen to your friends. And family members too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, family members also. Anyway, you have just been a jewel to oh, talk with, to share. I want to keep picking her brains, but the clock is saying we've got to cut. I know they're telling me cut. But the red flags, now you know. You've got a few, and now you've got to listen to uh, Time Out with Tara to get more pointers. Uh, and even how to be, you know, you teach them, you know, how to be defensive as well, to be on guard. And yes. So anything else? How else can they reach you? I'm, I'm on Instagram. I mostly respond to my Instagram messages okay. over Facebook and emails. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, it's Tara Newell, T-E-R-R-A-N-E-W-E-L-L. -L, and you could just click and find me there. And I also, Facebook and Instagram? Yes. And then I also have a website, taranewell.com. And if you're interested in EMDR therapy or interested in hearing more about PTSD, I have some video vlogs on there. That's amazing. I really feel like God has used all of this. You know, all this tragedy has not been in vain for you and your family, that you're paying it forward. You're helping others. And especially right here on this show and many other shows across the world, your podcast, you're helping to educate others. Do you agree with that? I mean, do you feel like God has just gifted you with something special out of this tragedy? Yeah, no, this is definitely my gift. Um, you know, God gives you different gifts. Yeah. And this is something that 
I definitely can really see me helping other women. Sorry. <laughs> um, me helping other women mm -hmm. and moving forward. But it's saved so many lives yes. already. Wow, really? And, yeah. You're getting reports from all over the world, aren't you, that you've yes. helped them? Yes, that other women have left their abuser. <clears throat> and that even watching me in my attack has helped save another woman um, <gasps> with a... She was in a bicycle attack, okay. You're and about to make me lose it here. Mm. she used her legs and got herself out of that attack. So it's <sighs> just this story is helping others, and I'm usually I'm using my words, my word, and really getting the message across so it's able to help other people. That's amazing. So there you have it, this little girl, grown woman, but she's just so precious that what she's gone through and has a sound mind, strong body. She lived and she's thriving. And I'm just praying that God blesses you and continues to bless you and little Cash. Thank you for bringing him well, and introducing. You. And uh, please give my love to your mother, Deborah, your sister, Jacqueline. Everything you guys have gone through is to pay it forward. You know, it's not just in vain. God is using you and you're reaching the world on this show. And I know you've done so many other shows. Thank you. Thank you for, for having all me. that you've done and keep doing it. Keep shining. <laughs> God bless you. And we always like to bring every episode to a close with our fabulous Victory Road RSVP prayer. And God told me a while back that if you want to be guaranteed a seat in heaven, like any event here on earth, you have to RSVP to any place special. Even every wedding, you know, uh, special restaurants, banquets, dinners, you have to RSVP or your name's not written on the guest list and there's no reserved seat and you just don't get in. So if you're not sure that your name is in God's big book in heaven, just say a prayer with me. Let's call God and RSVP your invite to heaven right now. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of all my sins as I forgive all those who sin against me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for me and arose for me so that I can spend eternity with you. Please put my name in your book and reserve me a seat as I follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we'd sure love to hear from you. You'll see the info on the screen, leebenton.org. Contact us. Let us know what you think of the show. And we really, really appreciate your support. Any donations at all that you can send, you see the information on the screen to help us keep this wonderful show on the air and spreading the good news in victory stores across the world. Thank you, and God bless you.